All right, folks, we're halfway home here on the L.A. Sparks 365 Network, your 24-7, 365 comrades of home of the WNBA and your two-time WNBA champion, L.A. Sparks. And welcome in, folks, to the show completely dedicated to the WNBA folks. Welcome into our whip-around show from every game in the WNBA. That is the W. Hello again, everybody. Cal McClurk from Studio 171 in San Diego and that man in the hangout, Chris Amancy, at the Anna Hart Studios up in Anaheim, California. Chris, once again, we're back here, man. I know we've kind of been ranting and raving during the off-air breaks about the move about uh, KT going to Russia and putting the blame for the loss today on Penny Toller and the season on her if the Sparks don't make the postseason or lose in the playoffs like normal. Other than that, man, how's it going tonight? Just still exhausted. Basically, folks. Again, the folks, the W here. Whip around, coach, folks, of every game occurring in the WNBA, folks, and coming up at the top of the hour or at 10.15, we will have the Buzzer Beater LA, our compacted game show, folks, to recap the Sparks game one last time in 30 minutes or less. All right, Chris, we got plenty of games in the WNBA tonight, man. A grand total of one, two, three, four, four games tonight on the afternoon schedule. Chris will begin tonight <clears throat> from the Mohegan Sun Arena in Unica, Stable, Connecticut. Chris, for the Connecticut Sun, man, destroyed the Atlanta Dream 85-76, to Chris, which saw the Sun lead this game, Chris, by a 21-point margin. Chris, before we, dive into the, before we dive into the numbers here, man, who would have thought that Connecticut, who is right now still the punching bag of the Eastern Conference, would go up there today and just completely rip the Eastern Conference champs to shreds today? Uh, I don't know. And nor do I, man, but the numbers speak for themselves, Chris. Going to the stats here real quick. Going to the stats here real quick from the numbers here involving right now. Uh, the field goal percentage went Atlanta's way, 46%. Connecticut, uh, correction on that, actually. It went Connecticut's way, 46%, 36.14 Atlanta. Three-point shooting, 40% Atlanta, 33.3% Connecticut. And then Chris... Free throw shooting once again. Connecticut 82.1%. Atlanta shot 66% from the free throw line. Other stats, Chris, from the contest. Total rebounds, 13-6 Sun. 15-10 offensive rebounds for Atlanta. 21-18 turnovers went to Connecticut. 20 fast break points for Atlanta. 9 for Connecticut. And, Chris, the biggest lead is a lob-centered affair, Chris. Connecticut led by 21. Atlanta led by 1. So there's the big point of the game. And, Chris, also points of the paint. 40-32 Connecticut. Player stats for Atlanta. Tiffany Hayes, 17 points. Erica DeSosa, 8 rebounds. Sancho Little, 3 assists and 3 steals. And Erica DeSosa, 1 block. For Connecticut, Chris, 2 players tied with 18 points. Shanae Gumake 10 rebounds. Alex Bentley, 4 assists. And... Um, Montgomery three steals and Kane two blocks. Chris, holy cow! Freaking the Connecticut Sun took the Eastern Conference champs to the woodshed and beat the daylights out of them tonight in Mohegan Sun Arena. Chris, I mean the numbers, man, don't speak for themselves. Chris, free throw shooting was not there for Atlanta, and they looked like they were a bit fatigued tonight, man, and they falter, man, to three and three. They're tied now for fourth place with Indiana in the Eastern Conference, man. So your recap of this game, man, of what we just talked about with the numbers here, man, wow. Never thought I'd see that, see that happen where the Eastern Conference champs or even the champs in general, Chris, would be beat down that bad. Yep, very bad. But like I said, off air, it's only the beginning of the season. There's still a lot of time, and but just well. Chris, um, we we do though, man, have a injury report from Atlanta, and hopefully this happens on Tuesday. But Angel McCautry has been out of the lineup, Chris, for the past three games. She has a right a a, a um, rhomboid strain, and she's dealing with, she's dealing Chris with bumps and bruises. So she is. Right now, apparently a bit ill, it appears, involving this thing, which I'm going to go, Chris, and Google real quick. I mean, I know some injuries, but WebMD, Chris, always knows the answer to this stuff. 
And I'm going to have to play a little Dr. McClurg here real quick to sort of see what's going on, Chris. But what it is, man, looking at some x-ray photo, it appears that she is dealing with a, um, what appears to be a, a uh, shoulder blade injury is what it looks like, Chris. So basically, man, the injury she's dealing with, Chris, is right back here. So that right there has a, a toll on your shooting game if you're dealing with their back. Now, I know about lower back strains, Chris, with, with neck of Gumake, Chris, but shoulder blades, though, man, are an issue. And also, man, this, uh, what, and according to Coach Cooper, Chris, what Michael said, his quote reads, it's been a, it's been a recurring effect since she left her overseas commitment. So, Chris, if Angel's out for Tuesday, this, that is L.A.'s shot to beat Atlanta if she's out for a fourth straight game, Chris, because the shoulder blades, man, involved with basketball, man, going up all the time, involving with the shooting and everything else, either you're making steals, you're going one way and defending. Hey, this thing, man, is going to – can get really out of control, man, and this might be L.A.'s chance. And above all, man, this could be the Eastern Conference chance to knock out the defending Eastern Conference champs as well. Yep, I agree. So the Atlanta Dream without Angel McCautry get pounded 85-76. She's able, she's been she's missed her third consecutive game, um, dealing with bumps and bruises from a bit of a strain on her lower back, according to what the reports have read. According to what the report, I mean, uh, look over real quick at the box score first. Um, Chris, you're having some problems over there, man. I mean, uh, look over real quick at the box. Score. I keep hearing uh, echoing here from myself, so I don't know if it's your problem or mine, but I keep hearing myself again over here on my side of the story here. But looking at the box where Chris, Angel did play today, man. I do apologize for kind of swimming up that stat, Chris. But she only had seven points in 20 minutes played, Chris. So, so this injury is really affecting her play right now. She's only putting up seven a game right now. Yes. So again, Atlanta wins. Uh, Atlanta gets smoked tonight in Connecticut, 85-76. Okay, Chris, going back to the Sparks game. They're next up on the rundown here. Again, man, it took 55 minutes, man, three overtime periods, a seesaw battle that went both ways, but it went to the Washington Mystics, Chris, 92-84 to tonight. L.A. had a few chances, man, towards the end of the game. But again, man, the blame game does not go to that person up there. It goes to the Sparks front office for allowing KT, Christy Tolver, man, to leave the team during the third week of the season to go try for the 2016 Olympics with the Slovakia national team, man. But again, man, I'm not upset with the loss. I know you're kind of not either. I know some fans are a bit upset. But at the same time, man, I keep – I'll say it again, man – but it went to triple overtime, and it was not a blowout, Chris. It wasn't someone pulling a, you know, pulling a Tulsa shock and, and having a 19-point lead and losing. It was about a three, a one to three to five-point game, and no one gave up, and it didn't go LA's way, man. But again, don't blame Parker. You put the blame, man, on the front office for allowing this move to happen during the season. Yep, I agree. Chris, I mean, I'm not sticking up for my favorite player, Chris, for the clank free throw. But when you put up 32, man, that wipes off the missed free throw that would have given L.A. a four-point lead before Ivory Long has clutched three-pointer to tie the game to go into the first overtime period, man. I mean, Chris, I'm not standing up for Candace for missing the free throw. I know I, I think she should have made the free throws, of course, to give us a W. But, hey, she dropped 32, man. She's back to MVP form. But, again, not not because I'm a, not because I'm Candace's biggest number one male male fan, but you blame Penny Toller for allowing Tolliver to leave the team. You proud, Chris, for something happening two freaking years from now, which is the 2016 Olympic Games, man. That's why the blame game goes to the front office and not on Candace Parker. Yep, agreed. The blame goes on Penny Toller. Chris, even if Rashad Jackson, the biggest... Los Links fan out there, man. That's a good. That's a very good friend of ours, man, and one of the better cool and one of our cool cats out there, man. If he's even blaming Tolliver's absence for the loss and not on Parker's missed free throw or calling her Princess Parker like a lot of people have that are Links fans, that's saying something that even Rashad Jackson knows 
that Tolliver is a missing component to the puzzle here for Los Angeles. Yep, I agree. So again, in a thrilling game, folks. Whether you liked it or not that the Sparks lost, I know I liked it because it was a game, Chris, that went that could have gone either way. It was a seesaw battle. No one gave up. No one quit. Everyone played their hearts out on both sides of the floor. In triple overtime, it went Washington's way, 62-84. to 84. Ben, Chris, the other game I'm going to get to here real quick is, again, man, we're going to talk about it for like a minute here, but again, I'll say it here, but again, no surprise. Minnesota wins again, man. Just no surprise, nothing at all included. Lynx win 87-79 over San Antonio, beating them for the second time in the past few games, Chris. On an interesting theme night, Chris, where the Stars allowed their fans to bring their dogs to the game tonight, at, uh, uh, allowed fans to bring their puppy dogs to the game tonight at, at, at the uh, AT&T Center, so... Chris, before we get the game, hopefully we didn't have any poo or pee to clean up during the game at halftime on the floor at AT&T Center. Yeah. Yep, agreed. In. We can't win. On dog's day out at the basketball game, but folks, Minnesota, the other, well, not really dogs, but the kitty cats out there, the Dog. London, win 87-79. Chris, do not interrupt me because you're going to be getting the self-promotion mating call of the mute button here, man, so hold your horses here, man, so don't interrupt me if you're going to be saying something here, man. 87-79 on the final score. Chris, you can unmute yourself, man, but Chris, this is like, I don't know, man, well, like the seventh or seventh time, I think, man, or at least the sixth time where someone has had a lead in the first half and they succumb and they bow down and let the Lynx run all over them and they get rolled again, Chris, because this game, man, was tied after the first quarter. The Stars had a substantial lead again, but again, Chris, they succumb and lose again, Chris, 87-29, Chris, but again, there is no stopping this Minnesota team, Chris. As much as you want to beat down the Lynx, man, just stop doing it because the Sparks aren't getting the number one seed. Even I've come to realize that, man, after game one, that L.A. is not getting it, man. So you might as well join me, too, even though I'm a big Sparks fan, Chris. You might as well join me and say, Lynx get number one seed, and they more than likely, Chris, win the championship because no one stopped them yet. Chicago couldn't do it. Stars couldn't do it twice. They haven't, Chris, I know they haven't played anyone respectable yet other than Chicago. They played basically, Chris, punching bags after that. But still, man, snap out of it and kind of, Realize Minnesota's going to go away perhaps again like normal in the championship. So how do you look? Yeah. Until someone out there, a la Los Angeles, Phoenix, yeah. the West can beat these guys when it counts the most, put your money and paycheck on the links to win the championship like normal until someone proves that they can actually beat them when it counts the most. Okay, Chris, the last game tonight, man, was a affair between the two Western Conference punching bags that went to the Seattle Storm, Chris, over the now 0-5 Tulsa Shock, Chris, 62-60. A nail-biter between two of the worst teams in the conference, man, went to the Seattle Storm, Chris, in a ugly affair, man, tonight up there at the Key Arena, Chris. The game statistics don't lie either, man. In this one, the, the uh, field, goal, field goal percentage, Chris, uh, ugly tonight, so I can say for it here. Tulsa shot 42%. Seattle right behind them, 41.7%. Three-point shooting, Seattle 28%. Tulsa 22.2%. Free throw shooting, Tulsa 80%. And the storm shot, 66%, Chris. And I'll tell you what, man. If a Tulsa shot, like, not catch a break, I mean, they've... Chris, I don't know what the deal is, man. I, they are just a team that is just not the same. And I don't know what the deal is, man, but I, Chris, personally, I think ever since the Shock have made the move from Detroit, they have not been the same team that we have seen in the Detroit days, Chris, where they won the championship in 03 when they beat Los Angeles in a sweep. They have not been the same Shock team that I've known at least for the past 10 years, Chris, when they were in Detroit beating L.A. in 03 the brawl in 09 or 08 with the Sparks and then Chris, because it just seems like once they left Detroit, they've had no identity, one marquee player, and crappy records ever since, Chris. And they're going to be in the lottery again, and they're probably more than likely, man, going to be number six again in the Western Conference, Chris. But again, Seattle, though, man, they get some credit here because, Chris, uh, Seattle's won back-to-back -back games, I believe, for the first time in who knows how long, I think. 
a Chris a Crystal Langhorn, who I still don't get why was traded to Seattle for Bria Hartley on um, draft day. She had a season high, Chris, twenty three points tonight to leave the storm. But again, Chris, I mean, where do we start here? We're talking about two of the worst teams in the conference right now, man. And again, Chris, it just comes down to the Tulsa Shock being pathetic and bad. What do you think here, though? Just, I don't even know. Two worst teams, I don't even know. Chris, in my view, man, it's more so about the Shock. I mean, because the Shock, since they made the move, man, to Tulsa from, from Motown, they have not been the same team that I remember watching in the early 2000s, man, when they were beating Los Angeles, when they were brawling with L.A., when they were, you know, winning the championships in 03 and whenever else they won the titles, man, because they just kind of been the same. And I think, man, when they made the move to Tulsa, I think a few things occurred. They lost some big players, Plenty Pearson, Swin Cash, notable names. But when you leave Detroit, man, from the city of Tulsa, Oklahoma, you lose your identity, you lose your spunk, and you don't have any good players, Chris, and you just have bad records all around, man. And yes, hey, Skylar Diggins, yeah, best player out there, Chris, but she's on a terrible team, man. If she was on, if she, if she was on Chicago, on LA, Phoenix, or Minnesota, Chris, she'd be getting more recognition. But Chris, she plays for Tulsa. She's not going to get recognition anytime soon, except maybe the nude photos on uh, probably either. Uh, Sports Illustrated's Swimsuit Magazine or the body issue for ESPN Magazine, Chris, because other than that, man, she's not, other than that, man, she's not she's not winning MVP. She'll be an all-star, might win, you know, but she's not winning MVP. And for damn sure not winning a, a, a championship anytime soon with that Tulsa Shock team. Yep, I agree. So again, folks, the four-game menu tonight, folks, in the WNBA go as follows again. Connecticut 85, Atlanta 76. The Mystics and Triple OT beat L.A. 92-84. Minnesota wins again 87-79. And Seattle beats Tulsa 62-60 uh, at the Key Arena in the Emerald City this evening, Chris. And, Chris, there's only one game on Tuesday. And it's the Sparks in the Dream, Chris, on ESPN2. On the Mothership, Chris, on national TV. So, again, folks, again, the Sparks and Dream on Tuesday night, 4 o'clock, on the Entertainment Sports Programming Network. Two, that'd be ESPN two, probably folks with Ryan Rucco and maybe and maybe folks Rebecca Lobo calling the game. We know about what we kind of despise about Lobo calling the games because of our UConn and hometown bias, but we will survive. If you do need to, folks, just watch the game and do like I do and put it on mute. If you can't stand Rebecca Lobo calling the games, just go on mute and you'll be very happy like I am when I watch television at 1 o'clock in the morning after I get done finishing shows or finishing homework for school. Chris, uh, not much else to report on here, man. Um, again, a, a tough way for the Sparks to go down the night, man, in, in double, in a triple overtime, I should say, Chris, but the upcoming schedule the upcoming schedule on Tuesday, Chris, actually features two games, and three of the four teams playing, Chris, feature Western Conference teams, Chris, we got LA at, LA, LA at Atlanta at 4, and then, Chris, at 7 o'clock, we get Seattle at Phoenix. Yeah. Good luck, Seattle. Yeah. Yeah. So, again, folks, two, so again, folks, the two-game schedule on thir on Tuesday night. Sparks at Dream, 4 o'clock. Storm at Mercury, 7 o'clock p.m. Then on Thursday, we've got two games. This is what we got Washington at Connecticut at 4 o'clock, and San Antonio will be at New York at 4 o'clock. Okay, Chris, we're going to stay here real quick on the W, but on a more – roster move possible here, Chris. Hearing from 365 correspondent Chris, Tricia Hardy on Twitter, there is news, man, of Megan Simmons being cut and released by the New York Liberty, Chris, when she didn't play in a single damn game this regular season, Chris. There is some talk here, but it all depends if Miss One Cent Tolder pulls the trigger here, Chris of the Sparks possibly cutting cutting rookie Nikki Greenchrist to bring on Simmons to the roster, man. Right now, looking at this, have the Sparks not have traded for Sandra and Gouda Chris to give up their 11 pick? Megan Simmons would have already been in Los Angeles because she was, slated, she was slated to go to L.A. at the number 11 selection in the draft, Chris. But right now, man, evaluating the situation... You're going to be without Christy Tolliver for a few weeks, 
or a unknown time frame, knowing the Sparks, he won't say jack crap about how long she's out for with the Slovakian national team. So you need somebody, because Wiggins is still banged up with her injured knee, Chris. There's no three-point shooters. Your girl Harding is not your girl Harding is not getting it done. We need someone other than Lindsay to get things rolling here, man, because without without Tolliver, man, LA is doomed. So there needs to be some sort of transaction. Either you let go of Chris, in my view, you can do two things. You can either cut Nikki Green, or in my view, man, you might as well put Wiggins on IR and instead just say, take the rest of the year off. Because it looks like, man, they don't want her to play at all, even though she's been tweeting up and she's ready to play and they're not playing her. So you either, Chris, you either cut Green, or you IR Wiggins and just say, Candace, just take the rest of the year off. We'll see you next year. Because, Chris, they're not even using Candace Wiggins. Now, I know that she's hurt, man, but it's it, it, in my view, man, knowing that Tolliver's out, Wiggins should be in the rotation somewhere. She was brought here, Chris, to shoot the three-pointer. Why are you not using your best defensive player right now and your second-best three-point shooter because of a banged-up knee? I mean, at this point in time, Chris, this is 100% Chris laying on the shoulders of the Sparks front office right now for what move that they have made allowing this crap to happen. Yep, I agree. So, Chris, in my view, cutting Nikki Green is the best idea. I mean, not so about much about putting Wiggins on IR because it's only a swollen knee, Chris. It's nothing serious, like a torn ACL or anything, Chris. But you've got to make some roster move. Now, Megan Simmons, Chris, in my view, at her days in Tennessee, Chris, more so jump shot, paint, player, three-pointers at most. But I actually like the idea to bring her to, to L.A., Chris, because you need somebody to fill that void because LH10 is not working, Chris, shooting the three-point ball, nor will it work. I'm going to say that 100% truly here because it has not worked in the first three or four games. And Wiggins is not even being used yet because of her injured knee, Chris. So I think, Chris, I think truly, man, and I think if Maddox Johnson's watching because he's not right now because no one's watching the show, Chris, but I think in Maddox's case, Chris, after this move, I think he has Penny Toller, Chris, on a burning hot seat right now. Because of this move, the team is, they played the least amount of games in the entire league. They played four games. They're 2-2, two and two, Chris. And like Shorty has told me a lot, Chris, whenever Magic has bumped into Penny, he keeps saying, man, Penny, we, Penny, we got to win this year. We got to win this year, Penny. We got to win it this year, Penny. So you know, Chris, that Magic... Right now, even before the season started, Chris, even when he bought the team, you knew he had Toller on a ticking time bomb here, Chris. And now after what occurred with Tolliver leaving, and now with the Sparks losing a triple overtime, now I think Toller is on a flaming hot seat and on a very, very fast ticking time bomb, Chris. What are you – okay, what do you think – okay, Chris, what do you think about the Simmons rumors, her getting cut by New York for one – and above all, too, man, about Matic Johnson, man, possibly going to bring the hammer down and pending the outcome of the season, possibly saying, no, 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 hey, hey, goodbye to the longest tenure GM in the in the uh, history of the, of the uh, WNBA, man. So what do you make about all the all the uh, crap bowl I just spoke about for the past five minutes here? Uh, you probably will because Matic Johnson keeps, like you said, always says, oh, we're going to win it this year, and Matic Johnson – Always loves to win championships, loves to win. And since what just occurred, letting Christy Toller leave and Penny Toller didn't do anything, just letting her leave. And since so we're leaving, leave, lose in triple overtime. And yeah. Chris, I'm trying to. I just Googled KT's name to see if I found any sort of press release or any sort of. We'll this, okay? Um, Can you hear me? Any sort of little news because we hey. know, man, that knowing the Sparks, we're not going to hear Jack squat about it for a while. So, I mean, hey. we got to find. I mean, the, Chris, there's got to be some something somewhere that hey. tells us the whole damn story as to why Tolliver is not with the franchise, Chris, because this is flat out ridiculous that. The second best player on the team is not with the club because of 
a tryout quiz for the freaking Olympics happening two years from now. Now, Chris, WNBA.com's beat writer, which was um, Frank Standing, writes on his game recap of today's loss for L.A. Uh, we're going back to check it out real quick, folks. But um, Frank, but uh, actually, um, but uh, Chris, uh, but uh, but Chris Ben Standing writes. The Sparks played without guard Christy Tolliver, but 12 point per game scorer was not with the team due to what the Sparks are calling professional business in Russia. It's what they are calling this, according to the Fran according to the to the team. She played for a Russian team before joining the Sparks this past off season. So, Chris, that is what Ben is saying on WNBA.com: is that they're calling it a professional business matter over in Russia. So, Chris, in my view, something has Polar has got to get off her ass and make some sort of move here. Okay, it's one thing, Chris, that there's a hashtag now out there while KT is gone that says hashtag win for KT. So something, in my view, will have to change on the double and, and pronto because, Chris, Harding can't make the three-pointers. She's nowhere close to Tolliver's three-point shooting range. Wiggins has got to get healthy, Chris. And for damn sure, man, you can't keep relying on your MVP to drop 30 every game to keep you afloat in triple overtime games, man. So, Chris, that's why I'll say it again, Chris. But, again, you don't blame Parker for today's loss, Chris. You blame this on the absence of Christy Tolliver because of the Sparks. Right now, Chris, dumbass front office personnel right now. Yep, agreed. All right, Chris, this could be the season. Right now, man, in my view... I'm actually kind of surprised to try to actually sing this here. Four games in the year, Chris, but this might be your season. Depending, Chris, of how long Tolliver is out, is out, man. You are looking, Chris. We know about the uphill battle you're facing already. Okay, you got Atlanta, you've got Chicago, Chris. Then mm -hmm. you face the Mount Everest of uphill climbs, Chris. You've got a unbeaten Lynx team coming into Staples Center, Chris. Who might, in my view, Chris, they might beat the holy hell out of you without KT, Chris. It, Chris. it might be that bad. Where the Sparks, in my view, Chris, they could possibly face their worst loss and possibly, Chris, all of franchise history with these two games upcoming with the Lynx on June 8th and June 17th, Chris, because I think... Chris, with, with however long Tolliver's gone, you're facing uphill climbs, Chris. But you face the Mount Everest climb on okay. on ne on Sunday, the, the 8th, and then the 17th, Chris. I mean, Chris, in my view, talking about famous mountain peaks, Chris, you're facing Mount Kilimanjaro on Friday in Chicago, Chris. But you're facing the granddaddy of them all. You're facing Minnesota. That is your Mount Everest Climb to the top of the mountain Sunday and June 17th, Chris, because in my view, man, right now, I already said it to you folks. It's pretty plain and simple, but Chris, I know we boasted it too that the games in Minneapolis for LA will be losses. Right now, man, all four with Minnesota, Chris, could be losses just based on not having KT in the lineup, Chris. So in your view, man, how big are the upcoming games for LA Tuesday and Friday? without Christy Tolliver. Is the season, Chris, in your mind, possibly playing the Jeopardy theme music right now? Uh, yeah, probably, yeah. I mean, I view, man, the season, I think, comes down to these upcoming weeks of games. Atlanta, Chicago, Minnesota, Tulsa, San Antonio on the road, Tulsa on the road, Minnesota back at home, and then Tulsa at home, Chris. So the Sparks, Chris, have a big, big, big uphill climb Tuesday and Friday and Sunday. Three games, Chris. Three teams that can and possibly could win the WNBA title, Chris. So let's hope, man, that the team comes out firing on Tuesday night. Yep, and I'll tell you something up here because, yeah. Involves Maya Johnson tweeting again, Chris. No surprise. 
But folks, we'll take our final time out. When we do come back, we will have the compacted recap game show, folks, from the Sparks Mystics. Triple overtime filler, folks. Buzzer beater LA will beat the buzzer. It's coming up next year, folks, on the LA Sparks 365 number carrier. So, folks, don't go away. <laughs> 